Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Laneside Reviews and on this episode we're going to be looking at That Purple Stuff Part 2. Alright guys, so welcome back. As always, I am the Bearded Beast, Rob Johnson, and as I said, we're going to be looking at our part two of the review of That Purple Stuff. For those of you who didn't watch part one, I highly recommend it as we talk a lot about how the cleaner affected uh, old cover stocks, slightly used cover stocks, and new cover stocks, and how it stacked up against, well, our old standby, rubbing alcohol, and one of the leading cleaners on the market from, our, from Storm. Now we're going to look at exactly how lane shine and how having a clean ball is going to affect your carry and your ball performance. We have a really cool demonstration where I'm going to actually show you directly how a, a fresh surface affects oil and how an oily surface affects oil and why that matters to you. And I've done something horrible to one of my favorite balls. We're going to show you how that purple stuff takes care of it and brings it back to, well, close to factory fresh. So why don't we take it down to the bench here at Laneside Pro Shop and get things started. Alright guys, so welcome back to the workbench here at Laneside Reviews. Uh, and when last we saw my friend here, Mr. Melee Hook, he had just come out of the box and uh, still had lines on him and we were cleaning him and showing how even a brand new ball has uh, some stuff on it and needs to be cleaned properly. Well, since then, I have done something awful, terrible, specifically for this video. I have taken my melee hook to the lanes and put 40 games on it without using that purple stuff. I know, terrible, I know. Now, when we talked about it before, we talked about how cleaning the oil off of a ball will help prevent it from lane shine happening quickly. Uh, and each manufacturer has their own cover stock formula, and it will happen at its own rate. It happened uh, with this ball. Uh, I got 40 games on it, just cleaning, no surfacing before I started to see some lane shine. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, well, you know, it doesn't look that shiny. It still looks pretty good. Well, let's put that to the test. Uh, all I used on this was rubbing alcohol, which uh, we already talked about in the last video. It basically pushes oil around and cleans some very surface material, but doesn't get down deep into the ball. Well, this ball is a 2000 surface out of the box, so why don't we take a brand new 2000 pad and see uh, just how much lane shine has happened since it came out of the box. So we've got a, a nice shiny spot here, you can see. Nice and shiny. You see that? Look at the difference. You can see it in the shine. Uncleaned. Surfaced. That is a pretty big difference. Uh, now in my experience, the uh, new Brunswick composite cover stocks do tend to take a little longer to lane shine. Uh, there's an awesome video out there that Radical did uh, that shows you know what happens after 10 games, after 20 games. So we understand about lane shine. But this is exactly what happens to your ball when you're cleaning it with a cleaner that does not remove oil. This is 100% first-hand provable. That's 40 games. Now think about what that's doing to the performance of the ball. How the ball is reacting down lane. You know, there's a big difference in surface between this 2000 and this. This looks about 4000, maybe 3000 in polish after all the oil's gotten into it. 
And even though you can still hear some of the cover stock, you can hear way more there. So you can tell that the oil is already affecting this cover stock. Now I have a really cool demonstration to show you guys uh, to not only show you how a fresh surface versus a shiny surface affects your ball performance in the, in the standpoint of uh, fresh surface versus a lane shined surface, but also to show you what happens when you get oil on this ball and you don't clean it off, how it directly affects where the oil goes on your oil pattern. So let's flip over to that. And uh, once we're done with that, we have some cool video to show and then we'll come back and talk some more. All right, guys, I got a really cool demonstration here to kind of show you what I mean uh, about how lane shine affects your oil pattern, as well as how not cleaning your ball or not maintaining it properly will directly affect your oil pattern and how you bowl. Uh, so we actually have here a couple of things. We've got ourselves some actual ball material. We've got ourselves a dry erase marker and a little bit of lane oil. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to lay down an oil pattern for us. This is going to be the world's worst oil pattern. You're going to see here. There we go. If you're a left-hander, you're not going to like this oil pattern. So when you have a ball first out of the box, it has no oil on it, it has maximum absorption, uh, and it has its normal surface, whatever it is out of the box. For this, this is 2000. I've hit this with a 2000 pad. And when it goes through, you can see that it's taking the oil down really nicely. And it's deposited a small amount of oil down lane. Now this deposit of oil down lane uh, is what affects your shot over time. The more the oil gets dragged down the lane, the less your ball is going to react in this area. Uh, and the farther the oil goes into the pins, that's when you're going to start to get uh, certain leaves. You're going to leave some 10 pins. You're going to get some pins actually sliding uh, bottom down on the deck and still standing up. And this is a problem for us. So you always want to keep your ball clean so that the more it comes down here, the less material it's bringing into this area. But what happens over time is the surface of the ball becomes less and less gritty, so it's going to go up to 3,000, 4,000, and it's going to have oil on it, which means it's not going to pick up the oil right here as much as it's going to let the oil sit on top of it and deposit more and more and more oil down here. And uh, this, is, this is kind of cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our oil pattern and we're going to add some oil to our ball material. So we're just going to add some oil to our ball. You can see there, I put some on there. Now let's put it through the pattern. You can actually see lots of oil still left here on this ball and the amount of oil that was taken off. You can see a marked difference between the amount of oil that was taken off between the two patterns now that we have an oily ball. And further to that, this is where it's really cool. I'm gonna bring, come in here a little bit and I want to show you guys something. So you can see this was the the dry lane ball. Oh sorry, the dry ball. We have some carry down here. And then as we go up, there's none up here. But if we come to the side here, it's pretty obvious. Just one shot, we have carry down all the way to the head pin. And it comes all the way back to where the ball left that oil pattern. So you can see, if we're not cleaning material off the ball well enough, we're going to be pulling oil all the way down the lane. We're going to actually stop the ball from doing what we want it to do. We're going to lose hook, we're going to lose carry, we're going to lose performance. 
So when we talk about lane shine, you can see the end of this ball material is much shinier than the rest of it. When we've added our fake lane oil here, it's made the ball much shinier. And this actually gives us a representation of ball shine. So the more you throw your ball, we've already established, the more you throw your ball, the more it's going to shine up naturally. It doesn't matter what manufacturer you're throwing, uh, each cover stock is going to shine at its own rate, but ultimately when you put two porous items against each other with something like oil in between them, they are going to shine each other. So now we have a shiny ball. Well, we know exactly what that means. We've, we've shown it. We're going to get more oil down here, less reaction, less carry, and less strikes. So cleaning your ball, very important not only to the performance and life of the actual ball, but your actual game itself. How this ball is going to perform. How you are going to score. Now, I'm going to show you something really cool, because you guys are probably thinking to yourselves, well, you know, that's kind of a, a, a dumb example, because dry erase marker and lane oil are very different. Well, I'm going to flip to a video here that I took at uh, a center. I, I'm lucky enough to have access to a few different centers. And I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like after three games on fresh oil. Uh, I'm going to take you down to uh, past the end of the oil pattern and show you how easy it is for that oil to move. So uh, why don't we go take a look and uh, prove exactly how realistic this is. Alright guys, so welcome back. One more thing to talk about. Uh, you're probably wondering to yourself, we've done all this, we've talked about how a clean ball versus a ball covered in oil affects the oil pattern, affects where the oil is distributed and how it affects your carry. You've seen fresh cover stock versus lane shine cover stock, but what does this have to do with that purple stuff? Well, as we talked about in the first show, you can use any cleaner during competition, during your league, as long as it doesn't affect the surface of the ball. It's not an abrasive. Well, the amount of oil that you can remove with a cleaner that you can use during competition is as varied as the amount of abrasive that you can use before competition. You can get one that's very strong, that removes oil and gives you a fresh surface, thus not carrying as much oil down lane, thus keeping the performance of your, of your ball and your carry, or you can use something that's weak and pushes the oil around, like rubbing alcohol, and keeps the oil in the ball, keeps oil going down the lane, and then you lose performance. Well, I wanted to show you guys, we've been using rubbing alcohol in this. As we said, all those games on here has created a shiny spot. And this is 2000 grit original surface. So I, you can see I already put some uh, purple stuff on here. Let's see what happens. After 30, 40 games, let's see what happens to this surface when we clean it up. This has not been cleaned other than rubbing alcohol. Let's give that a clean up. And look at that. I want to show you guys. Fresh surface side. It's our clean side. You can already see a difference to the back here, we now have some of the tack back on the surface. Same performance. Yes, there's a little lane shine left. Uh, unfortunately, because I have put so many games on this ball and let it shine, I have lost some surface. But now the surface with the cleaned, that purple stuff side, now is beginning to reapproach original surface. So you can see how that's going to directly affect your game 
if it's taking oil off of a lane shine surface and returning some of the surface to original, how is that going to affect your carry? How is that going to affect how your ball affects the oil pattern? How is that going to affect that part of your game? You can see a difference. And that's the biggest thing. I don't, as I said in the first video, I don't care what ball cleaner you use. I'm just show, happen to be showing you that purple stuff. But we've seen how much of a difference it has over a storm cleaner, over a, uh, you know, regular cleaners like rubbing alcohol that most people use. And you can see how even after 40 games, it's beginning to return the surface back to original spec. Uh, and it's something that you can use during your league. So, what have we learned from everything? Over these two videos, we've seen that rubbing alcohol, as much as it was the old standard for cleaning, just doesn't do the job anymore. As much as uh, it's a cheap thing that we can put in our bags, um, it is directly affecting the lifespan and the performance of our equipment and directly affecting our actual scoring. We've seen uh, the third party cleaner, the storm cleaner. It did a good job of re removing some of the surface oil. So when we talk about how it affected on our little graph down here that we made, our little uh, whiteboard presentation, um, yes, it is going to carry down less oil than the rubbing alcohol, but it's still going to do it. So over time, you're going to get your lane shine and you're going to get on the short term more oil down lane. So it's going to affect your performance. And then we go to that purple stuff. And I think it's clear um, what we've seen. It can restore a 20 year old cover stock to having grit and clean, cleaning it and actually getting oil out of the cover. We've seen it work on a ball with 40 games of lane shine on it uh, with new surfaces. And it's begun to return it to an original surface, which means better performance. And we've seen it clean everything. So no matter what you use, A, clean your ball. But if you have an opportunity to, I, I guess we are recommending that purple stuff uh, simply because of what you can see with your eyes. It does a better job than the other cleaners and it does exactly what it promises. It keeps your ball at a better surface longer and that can only lead to better performance on the lanes. More consistent ball motion from the standpoint of the ball itself will continue to do what it was designed to do longer so that you don't have to make as many adjustments to the lane down lane and it's going to make your ball your investment in your ball last a lot longer so if you guys have any more questions or want to see any other demonstrations give us a shout here at lane side reviews visit, visit us on facebook at uh, lane side reviews or you can find us directly at lanesidereviews.com and i'll be happy to take any of these uh, demonstrations and go more in depth or try any that you guys have to see how it stands up against another cleaner. If I can get my hands on it, I will uh, put it up. If you can find a better cleaner, I'll, I'll uh, allow you to prove it as well. But as it stands right now, that purple stuff is the best choice on the market and it is by far the best thing you can do for your investment. Until next time guys, we'll see you lane side. This program sponsored by Turbo, driven to bowl, for all the quad two inserts and interchangeable thumbs we use in all of our videos. Dexter Bowling Shoes, the world's most advanced bowling shoe, the SST8. Bowlerama Berry, for all the lanes we bowl on. For birthday parties and corporate events, call now. Still searching for that perfect fit? With no residue and easy removal, Real Bowler's Tape really is the Real Bowler's choice. Plantronics Rig, stereo headset and mixer, Play more, pause less. And Logo Infusion. Look the best, be the best, infuse your game. Logo Infusion.